you could have another one. Those are all final things. <laughs> all right, good afternoon. I'm going to uh, call the meeting, this special meeting of the University of Minnesota's Board of Regents to order. And I would note at the outset that uh, as this is a special meeting, it uh, wasn't on anybody's calendar at this time last year and uh, wasn't on anybody's calendar as recently as, uh, as April. So we have two regents participating by phone. We are a full board, but uh, Regent Powell and uh, Regent Rocha are, uh, are with us by phone as they were unable to uh, change pre-existing commitments. So we welcome them both. Let's have a quick uh, input here and make sure they're both on and, uh, and attending. Regents Rocha and Powell. Uh, good morning. Uh, yeah, good morning, Chair McMillan. This is Thank you. Uh, Regent Powell. Thank you. And, and this this is Regent Rocha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Excellent. And you two uh, need to, uh, you know, throw your shoe at the at the phone or something if I'm not paying attention and you want to get into the conversation. Alert, <laughs> alert me any way you need to. But uh, all right, we have one item of business before us today, and that re that requires our action, and that is the president's recommended fiscal year 2020 annual operating budget. And before I turn to President Kaler for uh, his introductory comments, I'd like to review some of the opportunities that we've had as a board to engage with this budget throughout the past year. And these notes from me may, may shouldn't come as a surprise to any of you. I spoke to this last week, but we began this conversation last October with two items. First, the discussion on the fiscal year 2020 budget variables, and we called us some of those levers during which we reviewed the budget framework with cost and revenue component along with information on trends on both sides of that cost and, uh, and revenue equation. In October, we also heard an update on the Twin Cities undergraduate, non-resident, non-reciprocity, and RNR tuition and the administration's recommendation to increase that tuition rate by 10% for fiscal year 2020. In December, our next meeting after that, we further discussed the enrollment outlook and we approved the recommended increase in Twin Cities undergraduate NR and our tuition rates, which go into effect in this budget, upcoming budget year. In December, we further reviewed a proposal to institute a tuition surcharge for undergraduate students in the College of Science and Engineering on the Twin Cities campus. And at our following meeting, we approved that $1,000 per semester surcharge. And then in February, we began to address and some considerable detail, the fiscal year 2020 operating budget framework, which provided more updated and detailed cost and resource drivers for this fiscal year. And finally, last week, we had an extensive discussion on the president's recommended budget, as well as getting public input in this room and a considerable amount of public input online. And uh, we're thankful for that. And I believe most, if not all of the regents had a chance to look through what the board office compiled for us. So, again, before I invite President Kaler to speak to his recommendation, I'm just going to share my personal observations. And in doing so, I'm not speaking for the board, but speaking for myself as a regent. And uh, what we asked, we as a board and as leadership asked the president to do, was to create a budget that, su that one, supported a transition to his successor, that two, invested where our most critical investments were needed, that three, made cuts and reallocated in light of the 40% outcome at the legislature. I mean, 40% of our, our recommended funding. And finally, that was mindful of affordability in this tuition space. And while I know there is, there is some considerable varying opinions on the board about the last of those matters with respect to our recommended tuition, his rec President Kaler's recommended tuition level, I believe that across all four of those areas, President Kaler and his leadership team delivered a very, very sound budget that sets President Designate Gable up for success. So with those remarks in mind, I'm going to now turn to President Kaler and uh, invite him to uh, set this up for board discussion. Thank you, Chair McMillan. Uh, today, the administration presents for board action the recommended University of Minnesota fiscal year 2020 annual operating budget. Let me start by saying that I sincerely appreciate the robust conversation we had last Thursday. Was that only last Thursday? Wow. In the Finance and Operations Committee about the proposed budget. I continue to believe that the proposed budget is the right approach for the university at this time and that the 2.5% increase proposed for resident undergraduate tuition on the Twin Cities campus is reasonable and justified. 
I continue to believe this in light of increases in the state Pell Grant program for our students with highest need, uh, increased reallocation levels from our uh, initial plans, and this should have said the state grant and Pell Grant programs. Uh, reallocation levels from our initial plans have been increased. My ultimate goal and investment in academic priorities and service enhancements to maintain excellence as the university transitions to a new leader. However, however, as demonstrated last week, there remains a desire among some members of the board for options to balance the budget with a lower tuition rate. So, if the board wants to move the tuition rate from 2.5% to 2%, I recommend a balanced approach that combines the use of interest earnings with reductions to proposed investment. Senior Vice President Burnett and Associate Vice President, President Tonneson will provide more details on that recommendation. Let me make one final note about commitment and investment earnings on a recurring basis to general operating costs. While I can support use of a limited amount in this case, there is a risk in committing an increased amount to recurring base costs. The Central Reserve's balance funds varies widely and is subject to economic conditions beyond the university's control. I think being prudent and conservative in this area is appropriate as the university transitions to a new president and given that economic outlooks are unclear. With that, I will hand it over to Senior Vice President Burnett and Associate Vice President Tonneson for a brief presentation of the details. Chair. Thank you, President Kaler. And I see the uh, cover slide is up on our screens before us as uh, Senior Vice President Burnett and uh, Vice President Tonneson join us. The, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, and <clears throat> thank you, President Kaler. Uh, the slide before you illustrates the operating budget resolution as proposed by the President. As he noted, we believe this is a thoughtful, prudent, and above all, reasonable approach in a challenging budget environment. That said, after last week's discussion, board leaders and other members asked us to craft an alternative plan that would reduce the Twin Cities resident tuition increase to 2% from our recommended 2.5%. The board was provided with details on that option, which is a shift of $1.6 million. Our suggested plan is to keep the budget balanced. And to keep it balanced, we would need to reduce investments in four areas and, as President Kaler noted, transfer an additional $900,000 from interest earnings in the central reserves to the o and budget. This chart illustrates the actual year-end level of central reserves in the, gold, in, in the uh, gold bar. And the maroon bar is the board's policy to reserve earnings of 4% of the state appropriation or 25 million, whichever is greater. That's been a long-standing board policy for to have a rainy day fund. As illustrated here, the combination of interest rate climate on our TIP earnings and expected yield from um, some management uh, initiatives that we've brought to you are showing additional interest earnings above budget. Finally, this slide illustrates the past 10 years of actual reserves versus the board's policy. It should be noted that in the last 10 years, only two of those years were the central reserves at or above board policy. Our estimates for fiscal year 19 and 20 show we expect our increase in earnings that we can use to balance in this scenario. Our solution would use less than 10% of the estimated increase as, as it would not be prudent nor advisable to devote any more than $900,000 in recurring interest earnings to the budget. With that, Mr. Chairman, Associate Vice President Tonneson and I are happy to answer any questions the board may have on this action item. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, before we can begin discussion on uh, where the board wants to go, I'd, I believe we need a motion to introduce the, uh, the president's recommended budget. So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Very good. It's now properly before us for discussion. And uh, I'm uh, happy to entertain regent input. But I, uh, before I start with folks around the table, so, so I don't forget, our friends afar here, um, Regents, uh, Regent Rosha and Regent Powell, if either of you have anything you want to say, again, jump in at any time, or you can lead the way if you want. Regent Shu. Thank, thank you. 
Oops, sorry. Was, uh, hang on, Regent Rocha. There's a little delay there. I'm going to let you no. go first, and then I'll follow with Regent Shu. No, thank no, Mr. I was I was thanking you for the opportunity, but I'll um, I'll I'll reserve for the time being. Very good. Okay, Regent Shu. Uh, thank you, Chair McMillan. Thank you, Regent Rocha. Um, <clears throat> I I would like to uh, move to amend the 2.5 percent increase to a zero percent increase. And um, I'm open to where the additional funds would come from, but I'm leaning towards uh, central reserves. So I don't know how you want me to state that. Well, I think you've, uh, so a, a flat tuition increase and make up the difference with central. Is there a second for that motion? I second it. All right. It's. Uh, before us, the, the shoe amendment to the resident's proposed budget. Discussion on the shoe amendment. Uh, Regent Davenport. Thank you, Chair McMillan. Just for clarification, that's to amend the 2.5 to 0 percent. That's correct. I believe, right, Regent Chu? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Chair. Regent Mayeron. Is it appropriate for me to ask Regent Shu the basis for his amendment, the rationale for a zero and rejecting the proposal by the administration? It's, uh, I guess, up to Regent Shu if he wants to elaborate further on his thinking. I would uh, appreciate yes. it. Yes, Regent Shu. Um, well, I this morning I woke up early and decided that uh, um, I wanted to better understand kind of the history of tuition increases and the total cost of attendance specifically. And so I um, went and uh, did a little research and produced uh, a total cost of attendance analysis. And I think everyone has received a copy of that. And I think we have paper copies if you don't have one and paper copies for other people who might be interested. But the, the basic the basic thing I want to address is the fact that if you go back to FY08, we had a tuition of 8700 and actually that, that number is a little bit inflated because there was a certain set of fees associated with that. The, I think the actual tuition at that time was closer to $7,700 or $7,500, and that's just in FY08. Total cost of attendance of sixteen thousand seven hundred ninety-three dollars, and if you compare that to what we're being, um, what we've been brought and uh, what's been proposed in the resolution, the original resolution with the two point five percent increase, we're talking about a, a little over fifty-three percent increase um, in just tuition alone, and then if you look at the total cost of attendance, the increase would be closer to 51% over that time period, which is just over 10 years. And I think we have to kind of break the cycle. We got to get back to, we have the money in central reserves. Uh, that money is built up because we've been charging the tuitions that we've been charging. And I know it's not actually tuition money, but it's money that we typically use to offset O&M. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but back in the, the uh, earlier days of this spreadsheet, we were actually transferring closer to $10 million a year from central reserves to o &M. In recent years, it's been less, but we've also been funding with o &M money the uh, capital campaign, the driven campaign, and also some IT uh, infrastructure increases. And I think uh, we, we clearly have the money as, just, as we just heard from uh, Senior Vice President Burnett and uh, I think that here's an opportunity for us to kind of break the cycle and actually spend money that uh, the university's already collected to you know, reduce um, or hold tuition steady. I'd like to reduce, but I'm willing to just go for a freeze today. Um, but I think uh, there's no question that the, the money's available to us. We're only talking about several million dollars. It's not, it's not a huge amount of money. And it is money that can be found in other places, such as uh, further reallocations or 
um, reductions in some of the other increases that have been put forth in this budget. But I'm willing to, just for the sake of simplicity, say that uh, it should come out of central reserves. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Regent Mayor. I would like to hear from then President Kaler or administration from uh, Senior Vice President Burnett then what the response would be because what I heard was that the recommendation if we went down to 2% was that was their comfort level on what would be prudent in terms of operation of the university. What Regent Shu is suggesting is something obviously that is significantly more and I take it the administration would say is not prudent, but I would like to understand why it wouldn't be prudent. President Kaler. Uh, thank you, Chair McMillan, Regent Mayoron. I'll begin and then ask uh, Senior Vice President Burnett to, uh, to amplify. Uh, as the history shows, thank you for this, this slide. Uh, this is a highly unpredictable uh, source of income. Uh, it has popped uh, lately, uh, really for, for a couple of reasons, the interest rate environment. Uh, primarily our use of commercial paper swaps uh, to lower our effective interest rates on earnings uh, on uh, expenses is, is another. Uh, my view is that that is simply an unsustainable um, uh, level of, uh, of income. Uh, again, you just have to look back uh, to FY09 when we were at $16 million uh, below the goal. The reserve dropped to below $10 million in FY10. Um, those days are easily likely to come. Uh, I also think it's uh, very likely, uh, even in the next biennial budget, given how this year's biennial budget is, is uh, constructed at the state level, uh, which is about $500 million of essentially uh, one-time money put against recurring costs that will require growth uh, just to be zero uh, at the beginning of the next biennium. Uh, we are at a real risk uh, for a modest, if not reduced, state appropriation. And if history holds true, should uh, the economy slip into a, a recession, uh, a reduction in our state allocation is likely. All of those uh, suggest to me that it's much wiser to uh, hold uh, these monies, uh, use them uh, appropriately for one-time fund money as, uh, as needed, uh, but not to commit them uh, in lieu of a tuition uh, increase. That's our recommendation. Uh, it's conservative and prudent, in my opinion. Vice President Burnett. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> thank you, President Kaler. And for Regents Rocha and Powell, we're looking at the Central Reserves balance recently tops board goal, policy goal. I guess I'd point out um, I would be very hesitant to take this approach. Um, two of the most important words on this sh sheet are estimated. Those are estimates right now. We, um, we, the, it's actuals looking backwards, but those are estimates forward, and a lot of things can happen between now and then. Um, so I just think that um, we are doing things, um, as, as we said in our presentation, the, the administration is looking for ways to safely improve our interest earnings. But betting on this number, which would be roughly about 10 times what we're recommending in the solution for a 2% tuition increase, uh, exceeds my comfort level as your chief financial officer and treasurer. I don't think it's a responsible path forward, and I would not recommend it. Thank you, Senior Vice President Burnett. Regent Anderson. Uh, thank you, Chair McMillan. I, I just was going to comment. I, I appreciate Regent Shu doing this for us. Um, I had to drive down here from Alexandria today, a little over two hours. When I got here, I opened up my computer and saw this on there, and so I looked at it. So I haven't had a ton of time to look at it. But I just want to, it just dawned on me right now that maybe a little history lessons in, in uh, store here too. Uh, well, I didn't serve on this board in 2008, 2009. I wasn't oblivious to what was happening in the economy in the state of Minnesota and the uh, United States. And Regent Sviggum, you were at the state capitol. My guess is that these central reserves were used out of desperation. If I'm correct, did not the universities and possibly the Minnesota states at that time appropriation, instead of getting zero increases or small increases, were they not uh, decreased? I think that's a fair statement. That's probably why it had to be used. I would concur that we've got $28, $30 million more, so I think $1.5 million is, is prudent at this time. But I think some of the reasons we used Central Reserve before, and I'll let you answer the question, 
And some of the reason tuition went up extremely high back in 8, 9, 10, and 11 is that we had cuts to the appropriations and had to build them up. I'd, I'd kind of be more interested in the Kaler years, fiscal year 12 on to now, if we know what the, uh, you know, in, in recent history, know what the rate of inflation for tuition and um, cost of attendance would be. And I guess if I'm, I'm wrong on that, you just figure you can correct me about the state appropriations. Thank you. So uh, does the administration want to respond there? I think the number is 1.2% in the Kaler administration years on Twin Cities tuition. And what point? Six percent on the point four percent on the system. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, if President. I may, the other, the other, just a couple of footnotes about this. Uh, the uh, big driver of Ruben Board, of course, uh, reflects a decision made by the board uh, to fund the the renovation of Pioneer Hall, and those are carried in room rates because that's an auxiliary housing that uh, is how we pay uh, for new buildings, um, renovated buildings, and uh, again, that cost of uh, attendance calculated this way really only applies to those students who are in our housing uh, using our room and board numbers, which is about 6,000, 7,000 of our 34,000 undergraduates on the Twin Cities campus. Thank you. Other expressions of interest, questions, uh, thoughts on the shoe amendment before I seek a uh, action on this by the board? Regent Swigum? Uh, Mr. Chairman, at the uh Expense of offending uh, Regent Sue, I move to amend the amendment. And uh, I'm trying to follow the amendment. I believe it must be in the um, resolution under tuition response to change the 2.5 to 0 percent. Is that correct? Is I think it's two parts. It's, it's to change 2.5 to 0 and then to direct the administration to fund it from the central reserves, if I heard Regent Sue correctly. And uh, while you can... You, Give me a sense of what you want, and we can see if it's a friendly amendment that Regent Chu wants to act on. We can also act on that motion, and then you can bring your own I, amendment. I don't think it'll be friendly to Regent Chu, but it might be friendly to other members, other colleagues here. Um, I, I agree with Regent Chu uh, that we need to try to uh, hold down tuition on our students. I think we have the right, the opportunity to do that. Um, we have a budget of uh, close to $4 billion uh, that to find two or three, four, six million dollars, friends, we're talking about a spit. It, it's nothing. Now, it gets to real money, I understand that, but it is a spit. Um, members, I would um, tell you that while well, Regent Sue is suggesting one place to find uh, uh, the dollars, uh, uh, very honestly, you've heard me speak in the last couple of years about administrative costs and our level, different levels of administration, different levels of bureaucracy. And it's very, very frustrating to me to see P&A increase by 170 headcount last year. I was thinking it might drop 170. Uh, it's frustrating to me to listen to our faculty. As early as this morning, I had faculty that I had a chance to meet with that are, that are concerned about the bureaucratic levels. Uh, um, and th this is involving everything from creating new curriculum, new classes. Uh, uh, um, uh, President, you were sitting right there and I was sitting right here when I showed you a letter last week of a wonderful professor, professor who last year tried to start a new writing class. And the process she had to go through, you and I couldn't, we shook our head, remember? The levels of bureaucracy have gotten too large, folks. This, this, and I understand this higher education. I understand this what higher education does. But I think that we can, through a very compassionate addressing through attrition, we we can address the uh, the the little overburden we have with uh, with uh, our bureaucracy and with uh, administration and. I, I would like to uh, move to amend the SHU Amendment in a cooperative, reasonable, outreaching, inclusion way to put in uh, one and a half percent rather than zero. I think we would have made some step as a board to try to address the administration's recommendation. 
I think we can find $3.2 million. That's what I assume it would, uh, the amount would be close to that. Uh, we can do it either as Regent Su uh, uh, suggests or uh, through some form of, uh, of, uh, of head count addressing uh, through attrition. Uh, we've not done it. Every other business in this country, in this state, has done it. Every other public entity has done it since the year 2000s, but not higher education. It's a frustration I have, and, and Michael, I, I apologize for not supporting the 0%, but I would like to find some common ground between two and a half. Maybe, maybe it's only a, a message, a perception that we can send to students. Maybe it's only a perception we can send to the legislature, uh, or it's a perception we can send to whoever, but we, we can do it. And, I, and, I, and 3.2 million can be found. I move the amendment to the amendment, Mr. Chairman. Given that's not a friendly amendment to Regent Shue's um, original amendment, then we would need a second. We'd need to vote on whether to change zero to one and a half, and then we'd have to figure out what proposal you're making as to how we'd fund it, because Regent Shue's was very clear that it's central. I, I would suggest that we take a vote on Regent Shue's amendment and then we look for additional amendments because I think there's other amendments that board members want to talk about too. But we can also get a second on your, your the the Swigum amendment to the shoe amendment. I'll second it. You can't second it. <laughs> if there is another second, we can take a vote on that. But I think we need a little more clarity as to where that's coming from, and I think we may get we, this may get a little complicated here as we try to amend an amendment. But I am willing to go where the board wants to go. Is there a second to the Swigum amendment? Or should we take a vote on the shoe amendment? I'm not hearing a second to the Swigum amendment. So with that, I'm going to call the vote on the shoe amendment and uh, ask for uh, Mr. Alder Chair, Regent Rocha. Yeah, uh, is, so is discussion end? Uh, I didn't realize discussion ended on the uh, the amendment. You're um, correct. If, if I, it hasn't, I, 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 if yeah. Regent Rocha, I'm sorry, you're correct. I should have, uh, I, without you two sitting here, I tend to forget that uh, you're here, and that's not fair. So the, there is no second to the Swigum Amendment to the Shoe Amendment. So discussion on the Shoe Amendment continues with our participants by phone. Regent Rocha. Thank you, Mr. Chair and, and, uh, and colleagues. Um, you know, at, at, at the outset, I would say that, you know, I, I, would, I would favor the, the intent of the the Sviggum Amendment uh, versus that of the main motion. However, I, I, I prefer the, the Shoe Amendment more at this point. And, and I'll just speak to this very quickly. Um, first, um, I, I would prefer that we would have a more comprehensive approach to the funding uh, than solely coming out of the reserves. I would prefer to have the administration identify um, a more comprehensive, balanced approach to, to meeting the, the funding uh, gap that would that you know, will occur uh, with uh, with a tuition freeze. Um, as it is with the main motion, uh, one of the challenges that I have, and this was part of the conversation last week, is when we say we're going to deal with the funding shortage by identifying four distinct areas and, and with substantial cuts in those areas, it, it, it tends to, I think, localize and focus the pain of the cut. And, and, and the corollary to that is if we did the same thing in, in tuition, we would come up with a budget and then say, well, we need to raise an extra um, $1.6 million, and therefore we're only going to attach that to the students in the College of Biological Science, where each student then is paying 5000 extra a year. Well, we wouldn't want to do that. So when we when we focus the cuts in just a couple of areas, it tends to magnify the the the, um, the, the cost of of the uh, you know, maintaining affordability for our, our students. Um, and I, whereas I would I would favor more, and this guy I think goes a bit to what Regent Sigan was just um, speaking to. If it would be a fraction of one percent of of the non academic uh, um, expenditures of the university. Uh, for you know, for you know, all departments to identify you know a, a small fraction of their budget um, to uh, um, free the resources to allow us to maintain the affordability. 
last, I'll just talk, uh, just, you know, I believe that the current funds are, you know, available in the reserves would get us through the freeze this year. Um, I've spoken before about how I believe um, demonstrating the resolve on the part of the of the university will, will help us in uh, our partnership with uh, state leaders and with the legislature um, to uh, um, partner with us in, in maintaining excellence while, while trying to uh, get the commitment for affordability. Um, in, and as far as sustainability of the cost, I think that's a fair question that the administration raises. Um, but that I believe that can be addressed uh, with the legislature in the event there is a supplemental. Um, and, and, and if if that doesn't happen, we can uh, then address it through raised tuition. But I would much rather have the opportunity to, to keep the base low, as Regent Shu's work has demonstrated to us. Um, although it's not a gigantic percentage and maybe one that reflects what's happening at, at our sister system with Minnesota State or in, in our neighboring states, we're working off of a much higher base in the first instance. Uh, and so um, I would much rather continue our progress on the, on the, on the base that uh, is, has been a hallmark of, of the Kaler administration of staying below inflation um, as, uh, to, to the greatest extent possible. And I would like to see us do that here. Um, and then I think that if, if we aren't able to get the funding from the state, and even if we do get the funding from the state, I think increased efficiencies, especially in a strategic planning context, um, would help uh, dramatically. And I would just I would just make the appeal to, to our colleagues that you know, with the, in the last three cycles of, of selection at the legislature, you know, the candidates uh, for this board, we've we've all made strong statements about our commitment to affordability. Um, and, and again, it's it's a challenge. I don't think the legislature's excuse me. I don't think the administration's been irresponsible here. However, um, I do think that we, as representatives of, of the public through the legislature, we need to continue to push for um, the priority of, of affordability uh, and, and access. And um, and I think this is an opportunity for us to do it. And I would I would urge everybody that's uh, that has made that public commitment to support the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Regent uh, Powell. Any thoughts from uh, you? You don't you. have to have any. Just don't want to skip you. Uh, I, well, thank you. No, thank you, Chairman. Just, uh, just a few. First of all, um, I just want to say that I appreciate the spirit and the content of Regent uh, Swiggum's uh, amendment. Um, and um, as everyone will recall, I argued for um, uh, an increase of one and a half percent at our last meeting uh, because I believe that you know there actually is. Um, inflation, you know, in our economy and, and in goods and services, and that the university sees, and that that is a number that is that's a very that's very defendable because we you know we do need to cover those increases. Um, however, procedurally, um, I guess my preference at this point would be to take these amendments one at a time. Otherwise, I just think we get hopelessly tangled. And as you as you suggested, uh, Chair, I think there are probably going to be a few other. Um, uh, uh, suggestions and resolutions here. So maybe the, the, the best way to go is to take them one at a time. Thank you, Regent Powell. I'm going to call the uh, vote on the shoe amendment now. So no, I'm going to call it now. So all in, all in favor of the shoe amendment. I, I request a roll call vote, and I'd actually like to speak to some of the things that have been recently said. You can request a roll call vote, <laughs> but I'm not going to go around the horn again on, on that. And uh, you've had the opportunity to make the motion and an opportunity to reply. I'm sure, Mr. I'm, Mr. I'm Chair, in, I'm in good uh, standing with uh, Robert's rules here. So, Regent, um, actually, Mr. Chair, Director Steves, would you Chair please call order. the roll? Regent Anderson, no. Regent Anderson votes no. Regent Beeson, no. Regent Beeson votes no. Regent Davenport, no. Regent Davenport votes no. Regent Her, no. Regent Her votes no. Regent Shu, yes. Regent Shu votes yes. Regent Kinyanya. No. Regent Kenyanya votes no. Regent Mayron? No. Regent Mayron votes no. Regent Powell? No. Regent Powell votes no. Regent Rosha? Yes. Regent Rosha votes yes. Regent Simonson? Yes. Regent Simonson votes yes. Regent Swiggum? No. Regent Swiggum votes no. Regent McMillan? No. Regent McMillan votes no. The vote total is nine to three on the shoe amendment, which brings us back to the original motion to support the president's budget. Regent Anderson, I saw your hand up and uh, would entertain additional thoughts on, uh, on where we go next. Regent Anderson. Are we going to uh, 
You do not get a second. It's 1.5. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm just pretty realistic that uh, I don't really support the 2.5 because I think it's, it's over inflation. Um, just on my way down here today, I, I Googled for sure just to make sure, and the projected rate of inflation on the CPI is 2.25 until 2024, with the two, 2019 end of year estimate at 2.0. And I know our colleague, Regent Powell, thinks that's going to be lower, but he doesn't come up on my Google survey. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Reserve. And uh, for 2020, the, my Google says it's going to be 2.73. And, and uh, I'll, I'll just tell you a couple other things. I'll, I'll just tell you my little spiel here, what I, what I thought. Um, I think it's necessary. I think it's really necessary. We are at under the rate of inflation, which I said. At first, I did not like when I first saw that the cuts and they're actually not cuts because I got it, uh, um, got an explanation, but the, the idea of closing the gap would come from some of our marquee programs, science and engineering, biological science, um, the medical school. I thought, wow, why do we want to take something out of the marquee programs of the university? And then I realized that those are the programs that can, uh, first of all, I realized the items that would come out of the budget were aspirational, the things we'd like them to do. They probably have financial resources in their own programs to raise the money to put these things in. For instance, if you take our, uh, I call it the blended rate per student, it's about $21,000. If you take two Minnesota students and an NRR, NRNR, or a foreign student, three of them at a time, they come to about 21000 tuition on average. To raise the $700,000, we'd have to admit 35 more students. And I think that we can let CSE, CBS, liberal arts decide if they want to admit 10 more students or not to raise that revenue, maybe not. Uh, so they're within their wherewithal to do that. So I'm not disappointed about those $700,000. Um, just want to say that we certainly, I think we're doing our, our, our duty here because we expected to get $87 million in a biennial request from the state government. We set our budget on that with, at that point, having a 2.5% increase. We got $43.5 million, or roughly half. State biennial budget increased 6%. They gave higher education only a 3.3% rate. So, you know, they have a lot of things to do. I'm not, not harping on them. They've got health and human services. They've got roads and bridges. They've got K-12. Uh, but at the end of the day, we were not their priority. So, so what, what I'm going to say is I'm going to propose that we go, I, I know there are probably not enough votes for 2.5% increase. And I kind of have a feeling there's not enough votes for 1.5. So in the spirit of compromise and keeping it at or below inflation, I am going to propose that we take, um, and I'll make this in a form of amendment, take the president's recommendation with the 1.6 million of additional um, discredit, the income from reserves of, one point, of 900 to 700,000 cuts and go to a 2.0 um, tuition rate, and I'll make that in the form of a, a, men, a motion if there is a second. All right. Thank you, Regent Anderson. The amendment would reduce the President's proposed budget, the one element of the President's proposed budget, the 2.5 percent recommended tuition from 2.5 to 2 percent and fund it as outlined in, uh, in the supplemental materials that the boards receive. Is there a second? Second been moved and seconded to amend the president's budget. Discussion on the Anderson Amendment, the 2% amendment to the budget. Regent Beeson. Thank you, Mr. Chair and colleagues. I wondered if uh, Regent um, Spigum would yield. Um, going back to um, Regent Spigum, do you, in your research, have you 
What have you determined to be the average percent of administrative costs for other major universities or for Minnesota employers, state of Minnesota, to sort of conclude that we're, I think the last percentage I read was 11%, and you're fairly convinced that that's out of line. But what uh, could you provide the data and information to the group that would indicate where we should be shooting toward based on those comparables? Regent, uh, thank you, Regent Beeson, for the question. It's not directly in line with the amendment, but if Regent uh, Swigum is interested, I'll certainly permit you to uh, respond to Regent Beeson if you want to. You don't have to because it doesn't speak it's directly not to. Not necessarily on the amendment we're on right now. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm willing to take this. Regent I said that. I never give up the opportunity to have the full. And I'm offering you the opportunity as long as it's brief and uh, you respond to that. Then we're going to go back to comments on the. Regent, uh, on Regent Anderson's amendment. So Regent Swiggum, you have the floor in response to Regent Beeson's query about administrative costs. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Mr. Beeson, uh, Regent Beeson, I have not done any research in comparison to other higher education institutions. That's part of the problem of higher education is we compare ourselves only to other higher education institutions. It's the one-upmanship, it's the uh, um, uh, not necessarily comparing to either other public sectors and or private sector uh, um, efficiencies uh, uh, that might be there or have taken place in the past. Um, I think it starts with maybe, was it 2011? There was a Wall Street Journal article. 2012. And, and while they spoke about all higher education, I think they specifically made a notice to the University of Minnesota. That certainly, Mr. Beeson, got the attention of the legislators and legislature itself and of the governor. Um, I guess I also have some personal involvement with the, uh, the university, whether it's uh, a teaching at the Humphrey School or just being aware of different positions that we seem to have that are uh, additional to what needs to be done performance. Mr. Beeson, I'm willing to pay more money and to charge more tuition for performance. I am absolutely willing to do that. But I want to see performance. And when I see every dean having a chief of staff that gets probably paid more than the governor's state chief of staff, Regent Beeson, I have some concerns. Yeah, I, I've gone through with President Kaler and the CFO, uh, Burnett, uh, some of uh, specifics regarding positions at the university, uh, which are just added levels that don't add to performance. I spoke to a custodian at noon who spoke very highly about you. I was supposed to tell him hi from you. It was uh, Ken. You, you know Ken. He gave me an article, by the way, that you had written. He was very proud of you. And members, I, I, while I got the floor, I just got to tell you this. It, this was a wonderful article written by Regent Beeson, our colleague. But he's advertising, folks. At the end, he says, please stop by at Sunrise, Sunrise Bank. So he's, not trying to, he's, he's trying to get customers out of this. We had a good laugh about it. But uh, I just think that we're a little bit, we have too many levels of administration. Some would be personal. I haven't done the specific research you asked for. I didn't know you were that interested in it. Thank you, Regent. Regent Beeson, back on the Anderson Amendment yeah, here thank, quickly. Yeah, well, thanks, Mr. Chair. I think we, we, hopefully we're not constrained by time here because that, you know, sort of the, the uh, perception of being loaded administratively is driving it should drive people's decisions as one factor uh, for the budget, so that's why I raise it. So a couple other comments as we go uh, down the road here. Going back, and I think Regent Shu and Regent, well, I know Regent Shu and Regent uh, Rosha would remember this, when we discovered that the Central Reserve was being basically unmanaged. There were expenditures going out of that fund without board approval. The balances that dipped below the reason the contributions were made to the general fund was because they were they were being used as a as a default, and the balances were below the policy. 
And that money and that balance was low. It does fluctuate. Legal settlements go in there, money goes in, and now we have a policy that requires the board to approve what's going out, either through budget time or through sometime during the year. Um, I think the idea of balancing the budget on interest rate forecasting is unwise. I just think it's a very important. This is an unstable interest rate environment. And I asked the question before the meeting, what kind of interest rate drop would we have to experience for this recurring source of money that we're all now counting on to, to disappear? And the answer was, well, need a substantial. We've seen substantial changes in interest rates. We could be going into deflation. We could go into hyper. I mean, I don't know which, and I'm a banker, <laughs> I, you know, um, but I think that's just not great. I would have preferred to see some of that money in the reserve to be spent on one-time costs that are driven to our mission. Lab space, $20 million, $15 million, and put it out, but now money that doesn't have a, a tail to it. But it looks like we're not gonna do that. On the room and board issue, President Kaler mentioned, why does that room and board tend to spike up? We also had the 17th Avenue apartment building. That had a surcharge not just Pioneer, and we start those assessments before those buildings are open. That's, we provided two new buildings to the students here, so they're getting something really material, and there is no other way to pay debt service on a building. There's no grants, and there is, there are no, there is no philanthropy to housing. They don't, it doesn't happen. So I think I'm probably on an island when it comes to investments. In terms of the returning regents, I just think I made this statement that we were squandering an opportunity to sort of push harder on the investment side because I think the returns are there. We've demonstrated we know how to work our money and to not use some of the one-time money strategically. Regent Simons has talked about some of the animal health. Those are really <clears throat> substantial concerns. And we've got a pot of money we've accumulated and we're not, we're not using it for one-time expenses. I, so I can't, you know, I, I guess I'll support that the vote is going toward 2%, it looks like, but I'm unhappy with, uh, with where we're landing the, the, the ship here, colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Beeson. Uh, President Kaler, response? Uh, thank you, Chair McMillan. Just, um, I guess maybe one point in, in brevity. Uh, as Vice President Burnett mentioned, the two most important words, well, there's one important word that's on here twice, which is estimated. Um, that's a healthy estimate. We will be above variance. Uh, but I also just have to tell you that we're going to have a new president, and it's just not in my nature to decide, well, gee, let me spend all this money in the last year of my presidency on stuff that I think is really cool and leave the cupboard bare for my successor. And I would strongly encourage the board not to do that either. She is going to need flexibility. She's got terrific ideas. She wants to do new things. And having some opportunity with funds like this, which I believe only can be prudently spent as one-time money, is a great gift to her. And I would encourage you not to diminish it. Thank you, President Kaler. I've got Regent Mayer on and then Regent Shu on the list and Regent Kenyanya after Regent Shu. Thank you. I made the motion, uh, I don't know if I'm going to show up as the one making the motion or it was a joint one, uh, to adopt the resolution that was before us for the 2.5% tuition, but I do support it. And the reason is this. I'm so impressed with how the proposed budget was built. It was a process that I think built from bottom up uh, with review processes all the way, starting with departments, colleges, and all the way up to eventually our senior management and our president. They have given us a reasoned rationale for this budget in an environment where we didn't, we only got even less than half with the legislature we had asked for from the legislature, which apparently you, you all who have been on this board thought was eminently reasonable. This wasn't a let's do a pie in the sky and hope we can negotiate down. This is what you thought you needed, 87 million and we get approximately a little bit less or approximately half of that. So I start with the fact that 
that the recommendation is coming from an administration who worked very hard, who have a reasoned analysis of how they got there to address affordability and excellence in our mission, everything that is important to us. What I'm hearing now is suggestions for something less than that, that to be frank feels arbitrary to me. It feels like these are numbers being picked out of a hat with the hope that it will assuage the legislature next time around and they have many competing concerns and we don't even know if the legislators that who voted on this budget will be there the next time we go to them. We don't know if it's Republican, Democrat, or even who that makeup is. So trying to going forward with something, hoping that what we're doing is doing something less so that we can partner with these unknowns, to me feels arbitrary. The number feels arbitrary. I think that this budget is within the realm of reason. We personally may disagree. We may say it would look better to the public, to students. I imagine it would. But I think at the end of the day, we have to do what's in the best interest of the university. That said, I am very interested in hoping that we can come up with a systemic change to address tuition. And I look forward to working with President Gable to see what she is going to, to work with and propose, which will hopefully be a sea change. Maybe it means it's not a four-year liberal arts education anymore. Maybe it's three years. But something to make a systemic change as opposed to try and take a little bit here and take a little bit there in order to drive it down a few dollars here and a few dollars there. I do think higher education needs a systemic look at this, but I don't think this is the way to do it. And I think we would be hampering President Gable. I don't want to do that. I don't want her starting with these kind of things, saddling her with these particular kinds of issues. I asked at the end of the last meeting, at the informational meeting, tell us if we drop it to 2%, what's going to happen? The administration is going to is come back with their best proposal on what will happen. And I think that these are cuts that, uh, that hurt our drive for excellence. And I don't think that they are appropriate. And I agree that using money out of the central reserves, I think, is bad financial planning. I really I'm reluctant to do that just for the reasons that Regent Beeson talked about or President Kaler, because that is such a fluctuating number we cannot depend on. So I, I made the motion to get it on the floor, but I made the motion because I really do think that a 2.5% tuition increase, taking into account all of the issues that we must address, is in the realm of reason. It is appropriate for this university. And then I hope and this board will, I'm certain, direct President Gable to look at more systemic changes to address tuition and affordability on a going forward basis. Thank you, Regent Mayor. On the notes that I have do reflect the fact that you answered my request to introduce the President's budget, right. and that is the, the Mayor on motion, but uh, that's under amendment at this time. When we're done with amendments, maybe we'll come back and vote on the Mayor on motion. And we shall see. I, I, this is my way of saying why I'm voting against uh, the amendment, the current amendment. Against the 2 percent amendment. Correct. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see, Chairman Regent Schuh. And now who's next on the phone? I've got Regent Shu, then Regent Kenyanya, and then I don't know if that was uh, Regent Powell or Regent Rocha. It was Powell. Okay, then we'll go to Powell after Shu and Kenyanya. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> since we've been in this meeting, the Fed has made a decision to hold rates steady, and I think that's all good for the economy. And here we are talking about central reserves and interest rates and all that kind of stuff. I, I want to make sure that people understand that central reserves is not all of our reserves. We're not running this university on a central reserve of $50 million. We have a billion dollars. And we're sitting on it in various places in our budget, which we're not talking about because those are all reserves that are kind of hidden from us. But in total, it's about a billion dollars on average. The central reserves balance is merely an account that was created after the Ken Keller, East Cliff, and office decorating scandal back in the late 80s when I was in school. And this central reserves basically is to account for 
the fact that they believed there was a, a slush fund back in the day um, and that the legislature was concerned. Regent Swigum, you might have been there at the time. I, I'm not sure when you were first elected. But basically, the Central Reserve's uh, uh, account was created to be more transparent about where the funds were within the university, especially non-budgeted funds, funds not including O&M money, not including tuition money. But steadily over the years, and Regent Beeson, you're correct, we did uncover uh, some issues with where the money was coming from. Uh, and the actual issue was the fact that the money did not come into central reserves. It wasn't the fact that it came into central reserves and then was, was moved without region approval, which is what's required by policy. But it was that the money was bypassing central reserves. And that could be why some of the, the balances were low over those years. However, I don't want people to think that I, I want to spend interest uh, uh, earnings in the future to pay for tuition reductions or tuition freezes today, uh, but rather it was the easiest uh, way to get a motion on the table without having to say, as Regent Swigum did, um, that we could take this out of further reallocations um, or, or even uh, reductions in some of the increases. So I'd just like to, I guess, go back to uh, Regent Swigum's amendment and are you are you going to um, abandon your amendment because I was going to move it if you're going to abandon it I thought it was Regents I want to be sure we're staying true to our our protocol here so there's an Anderson amendment to the mayor on motion before us and that's that's one thing that's to reduce one element of the proposed budget to from two and a half to two percent for tuition before I allow the inner Locutory conversation here. Regent Swigum, if you'll signal what your thoughts are about the motion, that's fine, but I want to keep us focused on the Anderson Amendment. Otherwise, this gets very confusing for everybody, including the folks listening to us and who have to comply with our decision. So, Regent Swigum, do you, are you intending to make a, an amendment to the amendment? Mr. Mr. Chairman and uh, uh, Regent Sue, I am not planning to okay. amend the amendment. I think my amendment at 1.5% loss because of failure of getting a second. I think that was a direction no, that there wasn't seven votes or even one more other than myself. Uh, so I'm not planning to uh, amend the amendment and I will support the Anderson Amendment. Very good. Thank you. Back to you, Regent Chu. Well, in, in that case, I will move to amend the Anderson Amendment to the 1.5 percent that uh, the Regent Swigum originally um, moved to amend. I don't believe it lost because it would be more interested in it. I believe it lost because people wanted to vote on the on the other amendment. All right. We stand procedurally now with a motion or a, a requested amendment to go from two percent on the tuition increase to one and a half percent. So the shoe amendment to the Anderson amendment. And is there a second for the one and a half shoe, per, shoe amendment? How can I not second my own amendment? <laughs> All right, thank you, Regent Swigum. It's been seconded. And uh, we will continue on with the conversation. And in the queue here, I have Regent Kenyanya, followed by Regent Powell. On the, on, and we'll come back if you want to talk about the Anderson amendment. But any thoughts about the uh, one and a half percent versus two percent? Regent Kenyanya. Mr. Chair, my, I guess my comments were framed in, in reference to the 2%, but my thoughts don't change too much. So sh should I proceed? Please. Okay. All right. Um, so last week I expressed reluctant support um, for the budget. I called it good but disappointing. Um, and that was in the context of, you know, we have a transitioning administration um, the, the number 2.5 is in the neighborhood of inflation, and we only got 40% of our request from the legislature. Um, and after a meeting, I, I met twice with S Senior Vice President Burnett and AVP Tonnenson, and then also met with the president. Um, and, and after those meetings and after looking at the budget, my understanding, and that's just my understanding, could, could be wrong, is that 
look here, we, we only got 40% of our requests. Um, this is what all the other levers came to be, and therefore, we're going to need to go 2.5% on tuition. Um, and that made sense. That's why I called it reluctant support. This week, we got a memo from the president, and in that I learned that, essentially, correct me if I'm wrong, but our original request still planned on a 2.5% tuition increase. So if we had gotten 100% from the state, we would have still asked, or the administration still would have requested 2.5% increase. And that, that was surprising to me, perhaps because of my own misunderstandings. Um, and a little disheartening, I, I, my understanding was we're going to work with all the other levers and then, and then come to tuition. Okay, we only got 40%, now we have to go 2.5. But anyway, that's just framing where I'm thinking. Um, I, ideally, we'd, we'd go we'd lower tuition 50%. I don't think anyone's against that. But I want to remind my colleagues, we're passing a budget, not tuition. Um, we could throw any number we want for tuition, we're passing a whole budget. And that's why I didn't support the, the previous amendments, because although the numbers sounded great, wh where's the budget um, that, that's making sense? Um, to, to Regent Roche's point, we, we've, I think we've all made commitments to, to try to help affordability. I know I did, and it wasn't that long ago in St. Paul, and I think we have an opportunity here. Um, in the past, we've talked about the higher education inflation being above the 2.5, possibly 2.8. Um, but just a reminder, even though that's the market that the university is operating in, that's not the market the students are operating in that are paying tuition. They're not, their finances aren't impacted by the higher ed inflation. Um, central re reserves are just that, reserves, I understand. It. And we can't be budgeting based on our savings account. And I don't think it's our responsibility to be doing that anyway. But what I do know is that the 2% that was brought up last week by Regent Anderson and motioned again today is workable. Um, that's the message I've gotten from the administration. Though reluctant, it's workable. Um, and I, I don't believe that I'm one to, to play around with numbers and, and try to decide what's what's financially sound for the university. We have a treasurer for that. And our treasurer told us that that 2% can work. Um, that is why I am in support of that. Like I said, we ideally let's go minus 50%. But we're passing a budget, not standalone tuition. These things don't exist in a vacuum. And then just a closing comment. Um, although last week I did speak in, in support of Regent Roche's comments on how this could be helpful at the legislature, that's a secondary benefit of it. Um, I'm looking at this through the lens of students, through the lens of, of the university community, um, and, and I, I trust we all read the, the public comments from our staff, faculty, and students, and alumni, um, and that's what I'm looking at. The legislature gamble, it's just that, a gamble, and it might not work, but I don't think we're setting tuition for them, we're setting it for our students, and oh, if it helps us in St. Paul, then great, so be it. Um, so with that, I, I guess I'm voicing my support for the, 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 the 2%, um, I know that's not the amendment on the table and hopefully procedurally we'll end up back there or, or re-amend it, Mr. Chair. We will shortly take a vote on the SHU proposed amendment to the Anderson Amendment, but uh, at the time being we're still collecting input. Yours is appreciated. Thank you. Regent Kenyanya, Regent Powell. On the, uh, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> yes. yes. So um, just, a, just a couple of comments. First of all, uh, I want to um, uh, echo uh, and thank uh, Regent Mayron for her comments on, you know, where the, you know, the, the sort of uh, our legislative partners fit into the whole mix here. And I just want to, to uh, and, you know, make the point that um, that's, not, that's not a consideration for me uh, really at all. Um, and they, you know, are dealing with a, a nearly $50 billion budget. It's very complex. Uh, and, um, you know, how they navigate and think their way through is, is you know, not something that I'm, I'm trying to do. My concern with the 2.5% or moving that from 25 to 2 or 1.5% has, has nothing to do with, with, with that particular partner. It has everything to do with I just think 25 is too – I just think it's too much. 
Uh, and I think that for the reasons that uh, Regent Kenyana just expressed very eloquently. And, um, and not only is it too much this year, but I, I really worry that we, once we say, yeah, two and a half, then it's, it, you know, it becomes precedent. But, you know, we did it last year and it becomes acceptable. And, and all of a sudden, three or four years down the track, um, you know, we're looking at a, 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 a Twin Cities tuition that will move from, uh, you know, 14 and change to nearly 16,000 a year and pushing total cost of attention, you know, getting, uh, of attendance getting close to 30. And I just don't think we can do that, you know, as the stewards of a land grant institution that's committed to access. So, so my, that's my concern. And I think someone else talked about our need to have a different sort of compact here, a different model, where we get some money from the state, some from tuition, some from endowments, some from productivity, some from new revenue. I think this is, you know, we really need to focus as a board with the new president on, you know, on a model that, you know, includes those factors that can get us to where we need to go, a long-term model. I just don't think we can con continue to do it on the back of tuition. So having said all of that, um, I um, uh, am appreciative of the, of the uh, amendment to the Anderson Amendment, the 1.5%. I, I'd really like to find out what, you know, what the sense of the board is. And, and so I intend, I intend to support that 1.5% amendment here. Thank you, Regent Powell. Other thoughts on the 1.5%? Regent Rocha? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think I counted uh, three invocations. <laughs> of uh, of my name, so I'll, I'll just make a couple quick comments. Uh, first, I, I I don't think it's a fair characterization to suggest that um, that those of us that are you know seeking to place a greater priority on the affordability and access uh, component um, that that you know to characterize that we're just pulling numbers out of the air. I don't I don't think that's accurate because you know you know I, I spoke to the fact that there is this. Um, the ability to address this in the short term, I, I don't think that I would characterize making um, access to the uh, University of Minnesota education as something really cool. Um, uh, when, when uh, as, as, as you know, um, the president stated that he doesn't want to just spend, spend things on things that he thinks are cool, I think this is something you know sort of with more gravity than than that, and in, in that this is this is really critically important um, to take. The, the, the lesson, you know, we talked about the history of the reserves, um, Central Reserve, in the last several years and how we discovered that money had been bypassing the Central Reserve, which um, I think has already been addressed. Uh, this is actually a much longer conversation um, or a much longer history. Um, the, the legislature will certainly be aware of the fact that we have, um, you know, tens of millions of dollars in a reserve along with all of the other reserves around uh, the institution. And um, it will have an impact on uh, our ability to make the case that among all the competing needs facing the legislature, um, that, that we would be the priority. And, and that's, that's one of the reasons why I think that this is a very important thing to do. Um, I fully disagree with the idea that we cannot be mindful of uh, the mood of the legislature. I have for decades now um, watched people speak with uh, a moral authority that the problem with affordability at the university is that the, less, the state is just simply not providing enough support. Uh, but then when, when the, the legislature sends signals about expectations, and, um, and this goes a bit to what Regent Spigum was discussing and, uh, and what Regent Shu has talked to, has spoken to already, um, that a demonstration of, of a commitment by the university that every dollar, whether it's from tuition, state, philanthropy, uh, intellectual property or otherwise, that we will treat it as our own and we will be very defensive of how that, that money is spent to ensure excellence, but also to ensure that our um, students have access to a public education. I mean, you know, there are excellent private universities out there. If a person's not concerned about cost, there are certainly excellent private universities out there, but our mission is different. And, and, and so from that standpoint, the, the ability to demonstrate that we are committed to maintaining affordability, reducing the base, um, using resources that are available, to do that, I think these things are important. I would, I would also just comment that using the central reserve for one-time things like improving lab space, that is a conversation that the, the university has had historically. And, and one of the challenges with that is you lose some of the preferred funding that you can get from other sources, from the legislature, 
uh, in particular if you use this money that can be used in operational ways. And so I don't think that that is a better use for for those resources. But nonetheless, you know, I, I've made my other points, but I just wanted to make clear that um, if if a person says, well, there's just nothing we can do legislatively, so never mind, please remember that the next time we try to suggest that the problem with affordability is a lack of legislative support, because I, I think we're getting strong signals of how we can engage in that partnership, and I think we're missing an opportunity if we don't do all we can to keep tuition down. And uh, I'll, I'll conclude my remarks there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Regent Rocha. Regent Davenport. Thank you, Chair McMillan. I also believe that we need to address tuition and affordability and look at uh, systemic, structural, financial sustainability. I think we can do that, um, as was stated, exploring new resources, reallocations, and looking at operational uh, evaluation for efficiencies. But I have a deep, deep concern, and I expressed it uh, last week, related to using central reserves to fill the gap. Um, I think it's, it's, it's uh, we don't have a crystal ball, <laughs> say it that way, um, and that we can use those for more targeted strategic investments. Uh, that said, um, I think the 2% Amendment is reasonable, and I hope we get to that as a compromise. Thank you, Regent Davenport. Uh, Regent Kenyanya, did I see your hand up again? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to call the question on the amendment. Oh, parliamentary calling the question. You've got to remember where that, uh, what that requires, if that requires a... Second, Mr. Chair. Second. I know it requires a second, and what I don't remember is the number of votes. Uh, no, moved and seconded it, it, to call the question it, it, on the shoe amendment. All in favor of calling the question? Aye. 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 That sounds like Aye. a substantial majority, so now we'll call the question. Um, Regent Shue, did you ask for a roll call vote on the shoe amendment? Uh, yes, I did, but I, it was my understanding that when we have people on the phone that we have to have a roll call. Is that not, yeah. is that not correct? Otherwise, I'll ask for one. It's not a, I don't think it's a requirement. So you're requesting, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll anticipate your request and direct Mr. Steves to take the roll call vote on, let's be clear, the SHU amendment, which takes the Anderson amendment from 2% tuition increase to 1.5%. Mr. Steves. Regent Anderson. No. Regent Anderson votes no. Regent Beeson. No. Regent Beeson votes no. Regent Davenport. No. Regent Davenport votes no. Regent Her. No. Regent Her votes no. Regent Shu. Yes. Regent Shu votes yes. Regent Kenyanya. No. Regent Kenyanya votes no. Regent Mayron. No. Regent Mayron votes no. Regent Powell. Yes. Regent Powell votes yes. Regent Rosha. Yes. Regent Rosha votes yes. Regent Simonson. Yes. Regent Simonson votes yes. Regent Swigum. Yes. Regent Swiggum votes yes. Regent McMillan? No. Regent McMillan votes no. Thank you, Mr. Steves. The uh, shoe amendment fails, and that takes us back to the Anderson amendment, and the total was seven to five, for those of you that may not have been counting. So we are now back to the 2% proposal from Regent Anderson, and unless I hear or see further expression of interest on that, I'd like to call that uh, that vote as well. Major Mayron. As the 2% amendment is currently worded, just so I understand, it does, the 2% amendment is that the tuition goes down to 2% and it is that reduction is funded consistent the way President Kaler has laid it out in his memo, which includes tapping into the central reserves in order to make up that uh, shortfall. Is that correct? Do I understand that correctly? Yes, it's a two, I don't want to put words in the president's mouth, but it is a two-part solution. Solves partially nine, 900000 with central reserve money and $700,000 with reduced investments in the programs they identified. Thank you. Did I get it right, President Kaler? Chair McMillan, yes, you did. That would be our response to a reduction to a 2% tuition increase. All right. Now, understanding that we do not have a, a phone-in requirement for a roll call vote, do we have a request for a roll call vote on the Anderson Amendment? Yes. 
Very good. Mr. Steves, please call Mr. the vote. Ch on Mr. 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 Well, Mr. Ch Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Regent Rocha. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I would just like to speak briefly to the amendment, this specific amendment. Um, actually, I'll make a couple of comments. Um, one is is in the conversation that you know, it is it is un, un, under our rules it's traditional that the maker of a motion be given an opportunity to speak last. I don't know whether Regent Anderson wants that. Um, and I also you know I tend to disfavor calling the previous question. I think we generally, as a board, get to a, a part where everybody has had an opportunity to speak. And I think that um, it, it's an extreme enterprise to have a supermajority ending. You know, a person's ability to have, uh, you know, provide input. Uh, that being said, I, I because I tend to um, uh, perceive Regent Powell as as being on point with his uh, expectations. I believe that the two percent will exceed inflation. I, I may be wrong, but it, in any case, I, I believe it will exceed inflation, and I don't want to be a part of uh, continuing the upward trend of, of our of our tuition against uh, against the market so I'm, I'm not going to support the two percent although I do appreciate um, uh, the the intent of of trying to reach that that compromise so I thank my colleagues for that but I am not going to support the two percent thank you very good uh, Regent uh, Rocha any further comments Regent Anderson uh, and I appreciate that from Regent Rocha and, and you know we're not we're not uh, oh um, you know, we can't read minds here. We don't know what inflation will be, but I, I do do want to say that, you know, and it's in response to some other things that have said about 2.5 and the legislature and everything. I, I just believe that even though our request at the legislature was not fully funded, it does not relieve us of the duty to provide the best possible education we can at the lowest possible cost to the students. Just because we think we can go 2.5 or 3% doesn't mean that's what we should do. We should always, I mean, if you read the comments, virtually everyone says keep tuition as low as possible. I'm not greatly in favor of having to fund it with interest for one year if that's the case. I think uh, President Desnick Gable will find another way in her year to redo that. But I'm saying if this motion doesn't pass, I don't know what motion is next. And it's probably going to be raising it over the 2.0. And so I would just say we have a duty to provide our students best education at the lowest possible cost. And that's what I'm trying to do with this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Anderson. Mr. Steves, please call the vote on the Anderson Amendment to the Mayor on motion. Yeah, it's just a point of clarification. Point of order, Regent Mayor on. Point of, a point of order. Point, point of clarification. Thank you, thank you, you, yeah. <laughs> So we're just voting on the tuition increase. We're not voting on the whole budget at this point. This case. would be an amendment to the budget. To the motion, which is the, the Yes, answer. then we will come back and adopt the final resolution. Thank you. Yes. All right. All right. Regent Anderson. Yes. Regent Anderson votes yes. Regent Beeson. Yes. Regent Beeson votes yes. Regent Davenport. Yes. Regent Davenport votes yes. Regent Her. Yes. Regent Her votes yes. Regent Shu. No. Regent Shu votes no. Regent Kenyanya. Yes. Regent Kenyanya votes yes. Regent Mayron. Yes. Regent Mayron votes yes. Regent Powell. Yes. Regent Powell votes yes. Regent Rosha. No. Regent Rosha votes no. Regent Simonson. No. Regent Simonson votes no. Regent Swigum. Yes. Regent Swigum votes yes. Regent McMillan. Yes. Regent McMillan votes yes. All right, on a nine to three vote, the Anderson Amendment to the mayor on motion carries. And we now have the mayor on motion to adopt the original, the original resolution. Maybe uh, Vice President Tonneson would put that back in front of us. It was in the slides there at some point with the uh, two and a half percent there. Uh, I guess that's not written in there, but uh, we all know where that is it doesn't matter it's uh, it's in the materials and uh, and I would ask for any further expressions of, uh, of interest questions on the original mayor on amendment it's attachment five that we just amended the undergraduate tuition rates resident tuition weight rates at the Twin Cities campus further discussion on the original mayor on motion <clears throat> 
Regent Chu. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure that we're not rewriting history here on the uh, legislative request. Is it appropriate for me to make a, make a point here? You have a question or a comment? I just want to read what the actual uh, docket materials back in October 11th, 2018 said about the legislative request. Go ahead. So I think there's a little misunderstanding about what we actually approved back then. Um, reading on page four, it says, there is a level of reallocation that can be sustained every year with little impact to university priorities. But if the state O and M on <coughs> iPad's not working, if the state O and M appropriation remains flat, the total reallocation necessary to address costs can reach a level of magnitude that requires some very difficult choices on the part of the university. Number one, raise tuition on students at rates at or above inflation in order to maintain the current scope of quality programs. Number two, reduce the breadth and depth of the university's impact but maintain quality. Or three, maintain the current scope of the university's work but sacrifice quality in some areas. The point I just want to make here is that there was never a 2.5% or any percentage um, uh, listed when we approved this back in October. And in fact, it says if the appropriation remains flat, that we would be forced to do some things such as raise tuition on students at rates at or above inflation in order to maintain the current scope of quality, program, of quality programs. So um, I think there just has been some misstatements today about what we actually proved back then. And I just want to be clear that uh, we don't rewrite history. And in fact, we are uh, about to approve um, uh, tuition increases on students uh, at or above inflation. And we did, in fact, get more money from the legislature this year. So um, I think there was, another, there was another meeting where we had a discussion about whether or not we should increase the level of uh, funding uh, requested. And we were told that that wasn't a good idea. But I think now we know that uh, our strategy did not work, and we need to come up with a better plan in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Shu. I'm going to ask for a vote on the mayor on motion to adopt the president's budget as amended by the Anderson Amendment. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. No. No. All right, for uh, clarity's sake, we will record Regent Powell's as an aye and Regent Roche's as a nay. Very good. That concludes the business of uh, the board for this special meeting. I thank uh, the administration for all the work uh, that's gone into this, and I thank my colleagues for uh, being here quite a bit in the month of June. We are adjourned.